Okay. Awesome. So uh, guys, thank you so much for tuning in to another um, episode of Community Voices. Um, we are back with a familiar face. Um, Miss Fletcher is back with us. Um, <laughs> you guys know Fletcher, obviously, from our JD campaigns and, of course, from her amazing and sort of um, what's the word that I'm looking for? Um, just bomb music career, amazing music career. Um, Fletcher, since we've last talked, um, a lot has happened for you, um, both in music and outside of music, and we will certainly get into all of that. But um, welcome back. Um, so happy to have you. Um, I guess first and foremost, we are in the middle of June, which is obviously a very busy month um, for folks in the community. Um, how are you doing? How are you feeling? Um, what's been some of the bright spots of the month so far for you? You know, it's the it's it's the gayest month of all, and <laughs> June is like a really really fun, celebratory, exciting, significant, beautiful time. And I've played a couple Pride so far. I headlined Pittsburgh Pride. Um, I put on a Pride festival called Fletcher and Friends in my hometown in Asbury Park, New Jersey, last weekend. Um, I just played LA Pride on Friday, and I brought out. Tuve Lu and Bella Thorne and Haley Kiyoko. And so, I mean, my life feels like pride. My life feels just like a queer celebratory, like time all the time. Um, so it's been really lovely and fun and um, just getting to like celebrate in the space of, of so many people who are also just wanting to celebrate themselves, I think is such a magnetic and magical energy to be a part of. So it's been, it's been, there's been a lot of highlights so far and it's only like halfway through the month. I know. Oh my gosh. Well, yeah, I, um, I tuned in for the LA pride show and um, it was sick. I was like, dang, I've been so focused on New York city pride, but I feel like next year LA is like top of the list of places to go for sure. LA was LA was where it's at. There was Meg the Stallion, uh, Mariah Carey, King Princess, G Flip. Like there were so many amazing artists and people that that were out this year and out pun intended. Um, <laughs> and yeah, it was really it was a great time. Amazing. Well, that's so good to hear. I'm glad you're having a good month so far. Um, so I wanted to just kind of jump into the conversation and um, really what we um, are really leaning into and thinking about um, as we have conversations just around what it means to celebrate pride, um, how how different communities celebrate. We want to talk a little bit about allyship and just how important that can be. Um, I think that a lot of people when looking at Pride Month or just looking at opportunities to celebrate queer communities month after month, day after day, year after year, um, there are a lot of people that maybe sit outside of the queer community who are looking at celebrations and going, how do I get plugged in? How do I help? How do I support? And how do I be a good ally to my queer friends, my queer colleagues, my neighbors? Um, so I would love to ask you, Fletcher, how allyship has, or how different allies and allyship has impacted your personal journey um, and why it's so important to have allies within and outside of the LGBTQIA uh, plus community? Oh, I think that's a, that's a big question. And I think allyship is something that probably means something different to everybody individually, depending on your story and your journey. But I think allyship for me and my personal journey, especially at the, at the beginning of when I first came out and I first was sort of learning the language to talk about my feelings and my experience and to have people that were willing to show up for me, even if they didn't know the best way to show up. And I think one of the most important aspects and one of the first things that you can do in being an ally is to listen, is to listen to somebody, to ask somebody what they need, to ask them, to ask someone, hey, how can I show up for you? Um, being a listener, especially when we don't know what it's like to walk in somebody else's shoes, um, to allow them to just explain to you what it is in their life that they are needing in that moment and looking for and um, having a great amount of of empathy. And even if you don't understand it's okay if you don't understand to just 
to be open and willing to receive somebody else's truth, um, I think are all just really beautiful tools to be able to share with anyone really, but especially a queer person who is navigating at their journey, both at the beginning in the middle and during it, it's like, we should always be checking in on each other. And um, I think that's a really, at least some of the beginning steps of, of, of allyship and how it's also greatly impacted my life, just having people show up for me. Um, and even when they didn't know what to say or didn't have the right thing to say, just like showing me love and being like, Hey, I love you. What can I do? Like, that goes that goes way farther than anybody could ever imagine. Yeah, I agree. I think that, and I I feel like I find myself with this challenge too, when you're helping someone and, and you probably, especially somebody who writes music and you your, lang- your love language sometimes being words, you sometimes yeah. want to have the right thing to say, but sometimes you don't. Like sometimes yeah. you really just don't have the right thing to say. And I think of those times when I just shut my mouth and just showed up for someone physically, how much yeah. that meant and was sometimes maybe meant more than anything that I could have strung together. Um, yeah. I think it's really important to make note of that because again, like I could put my foot in my mouth a million times, but to show up for someone physically, that's always going to, you know, show, show so much love and support. So. Well, Cause I think we also put so much pressure on ourselves to, for the have to have the exact right thing to say or that I don't want to I don't want to offend somebody or maybe I don't know enough to speak about this or like that's okay it it is okay you don't have to have the words you don't have to understand the terminology like it's okay if you don't have necessarily the right thing to say I think just showing up with love allyship is showing up with love is being there for another person is listening to somebody else yeah. And sometimes that is the most powerful thing that you can do. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Retweet. Um, <laughs> okay. Well, I was, I was going to ask about like, you know, what allies can do to support, but I feel like you, you, you basically package that all up so perfectly. So um, I would love to know um, just from you in your personal life and maybe even in your professional life, though they've obviously blended so much, who have been um, some of your biggest allies um, that have been by your side on this journey? I mean, in, in my personal life, you know, like my brother's been a really big ally for me for since day one. And I had a, I had a really difficult time coming out. I grew up in a very, in a small conservative town in New Jersey, and I really struggled with it. And I didn't know any queer people in my town. Um, and my brother was really there for me. My, my best friends really showed up for me. I remember I was like, Hey, I kissed a girl and I don't know what to do about it. And they're like, sick, tell me, was it fun? What did it feel like? Like just the curiosity of just even, um, you know, people asking about the experience was something that made me feel really loved and supported. And my fans, I mean, my fans have just shown up for me in a way. I, I remember I was so terrified to put out my first music video that was like a same sex love story. It was like me falling in love with my then girlfriend at the time. And, um, I just remember the feedback and the response that I got. And I just felt so uplifted and celebrated. And I was like, Oh my God, I can do this. Like I can talk more about this because they're saying that like, this is helping them, but this is helping me accept myself and love myself in a way that I didn't even know to be possible. Um, and so my fans and just the the community and like other queer people and organizations and just I, it's been like such this um sort of full circle you know moment of just like oh I tell my truth and that gets accepted and somebody uplifts that and that helps them in some way and it's this very like give and take relationship between fandom the community the the personal human beings in my life mentors um and so that's something that's been like really, really powerful. I love that. That's good. It's good to have support coming from all angles. Like it really does take a village, honestly, um, especially like you said, if you grew up in a conservative community. Um, so to have that support, which it sounds like you have so much of it can really, um, it's life-changing, I I think in, in so many ways. So that's awesome. Um, 
you spoke a little bit about allyship and the different ways in which people can show up beyond just using their words by physically showing up. But are there what are some other things from your point of view that you think some of the viewers could do to be better allies, to better educate themselves? Like, I know that like there are all these sort of like resource guides and infographics that can probably help people as well. But from your point of view, what are maybe just a couple of tidbits that you might share with people who are looking to be a better ally to their best friend that just came out, you know, um, what can they, where, what's a good place to start, I guess I would say. Um, well, I think you can ask one, you can ask your queer friend of like, can you, are there any resources that you would recommend? I mean, not that it's not, it's not necessarily on the queer person to educate you by any means. I think, you know, there's also something to be said about, you know, looking into, things on your own or, but I, but I really do think, I mean, and I think it's personal to everybody. Like if I had a friend come to me, that's like, Hey, how can I learn more? How can I show up better? And it would be a matter of me talking about like my personal experience to them. And this is how, you know, this, this is what, this is how I feel like loved and celebrated. And this is what I need. And this is how, like, I, you know, am needing somebody to show up for me right now. Um, and so I think, you know, there's all like GLAD is like an incredible organization that I work really, really closely with that's been fighting the good fight for a long time. And um, there are so many, the Trevor Project, and um, th there's so many amazing organizations that exist that are offering countless amounts of resources and information to, you know, always find a way to jump in and to lean in. and. Um, you know, I think there's always ways to, to learn more and to be better. And I think just asking questions is a really good place to start because it's okay that you don't know where to begin. Yeah. T always asking. I think that's like in so many scenarios, um, it's like, what's that? The golden rule is like treat others the way you want to be treated, but the platinum rule is rule is like treat people how they want to be treated and yeah. I feel like you don't really know that until you ask. So, and also just another thing is like, sure, there's a ton of resources and all that stuff, but there's also just something that goes that that goes without saying of like just being kind and compassionate, like just showing up with kindness mm -hmm. is that's like the medicine of the universe of literally just being like, hey, I see you, I love you, like celebrate, do whatever makes you feel good and whatever makes you feel like the most empowered version of you. I, even if it's not my own truth, it's like, there are, there are infinite truths, infinite possibilities. You don't need to understand every single one that, but that doesn't mean that you can't show up with kindness and compassion. Like that's just at the basis of everything. And the kind of like human language that we all speak it's like it's like the language that our heart understands yeah absolutely I, I couldn't agree more um totally so I I want to chat a little bit about you know you mentioned Asbury Park and, and growing up in New Jersey and um I know that in the past you've also mentioned that you in your music and in your career really wanted to be the artist that you needed as a little kid um so growing up, how is that carried into your artistry now? And how much are you keeping, you know, little Carrie in mind when you are stepping out onto these big stages and really becoming, um, whether you want to be or not, sort of a role model figure for other queer kids? Um, how does that translate itself into your music and into the interactions that you have with your fans? Oh, wow. I think whenever I step out onto a stage, I'm always thinking about a little version, the little version of me who dreamt of this for so long, but was also really terrified by it and couldn't ever fathom being seen by so many people. And I just recently saw a home video of myself and I was six years old and I was singing part of your world from the little mermaid. It was my first time performing in front of an audience ever. And I was so nervous and I was just staring at the floor the whole time. And my like birthmark that I still have on the side of my face that gets really red when I'm nervous was super bright red. 
And I just, I always get, I get that visual flash to me every time before I step out on stage and I'm like, she needed a superhero and I am that superhero and I can do anything. And I'm going to go out here and I just am going to be myself. And that is all little me ever wanted and ever needed was to, to just get a future flash of like, you're going to be okay. And not only are you going to be okay, you're going to thrive. And, um, I think just being able to, my biggest part of like my mission that I feel like I'm here to do is to reflect back to people that you have the potential to be the greatest version of yourself and you deserve love and joy and freedom and acceptance and to be celebrated. But that comes from an internal place first. And if you can find that worth, because the rest of the world is going to tell you that you are not worthy of it. They'll do everything in its power to make sure that you believe that you're not. And that's not the truth. It is like our birthright to have joy and to celebrate and to have fucking fun and um, to just bring that to an audience and to a space and to my fans and to just let people know that it's like, it's okay. You're going to be okay. And you're going to be great. Um, And that, and so when I think about that, am I, am I the artist I needed when I was little? I'm like, I'm that artist times a million. Absolutely. I love that. That's, I mean, it's gotta be such a full circle experience and you get to do it in front of so many different types of crowds and different types of people. And it's, you know, the impact is obviously super present, but I'm sure that I couldn't even imagine what it must be like to step out onto a stage like that, but to be able to flash back to yourself, like you said, seeing part of your world and know that like, that little that little performer is still within you um yeah. getting to sort of have that moment in, in such a grand way um is pretty awesome so thank you for sharing that I love that um so we're going to chat a little bit more about just like labels obviously when we think about pride month and just the queer community in general there are a million labels that we either subscribe to or don't subscribe to sometimes you feel like you have to other times um the door is left wide open you know, and you've you've spoken about how certain about certain labels and how that's really not how you want to live your life within these frameworks. Um, so how important is it for people who want to support the queer community to also respect those wishes? And how can people kind of navigate those conversations without needing to subscribe to labels, but still being able to provide support where it's needed? Yeah. I mean, I think again, that also, that just like very much comes down to the individual and their individual experience. And I also think that goes back to the point of listening, you know, like ask somebody, Hey, how do you, how do you identify? Um, are there, is there something that would, that I could know, understand better and help you feel more comfortable or, you know, I mean, for, for me, I just think that I have always felt like queerness to me has always just felt like a really expansive, a really, really expansive thing for me and less of um, an identity that I really cling to and more of an openness and a life of um, curiosity. And I don't feel particularly bound to any kind of specific um label. And when I talk about it, I'm like, yeah, I'm queer as hell. But to me, that just means it's like anything goes. And it's always just been about a heart and a soul and, and an energy. And that's different for everybody. Um, And I think it's whatever you really want it to look like. And that's the cool part is that it can look like, however, how do you identify how I identify queerness is totally different than how you identify it than my neighbor, than my friends and other artists, friends of mine. Like it's not my thing to define I mean, uh, for somebody else, just me. And that's what I think is super beautiful. Um, and so I think just listening to somebody of like, Hey, how do you, what, what labels feel good for you? Do labels feel good for you? Do they not? Why do they not? Why do they? Like, I think, you know, just we're all so unique and that's a really magical thing and such a gift. Yeah, absolutely. I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. Um, thank you. Um, so I, in addition to chatting about just 
all of the different nuances and things that come along with celebrating this month. I also want to talk about you because again, since our last conversation, you have been you've been you've been working. You've been working pretty pretty hard. <laughs> and I and like that's like an understatement, right? Um since we last talked, the album is out. Um you appeared on the new L word. You've been performing mm -hmm. on some big, big stages. Um, one of them being New Year's Eve with Miley Cyrus. Um, there was LA Pride. Um, and that is just scratching the surface of everything that you've done in the last year, two years. Um, looking back on, let's say the last like 24 months, um, are there any big moments that stick out to you? And if you don't want to list one, that's fine. Um, but I just love to know, like of the, of the things you've been doing, like what sticks out as most exciting or most unexpected. Um, and then is there something in this next, in the la later half of this year, 2023, um, that you're super excited about and looking forward to? Yeah. Um, oh, I've had so many amazing highlights. I went on four tours last year. Um, I did two North American headline tours, a European headline tour and an Australia and New Zealand headline tour. Um, that was so magical to be able to be on the road again and see my fans and connect in such a deep and personal and intimate way. Um, I get to bring girl of my dreams to uh, Europe at the end of this year and to Australia and New Zealand as well, which I'm, that's like a huge highlight for me um, and something I'm looking so forward to. I got to perform with Miley Cyrus for her New Year's Eve special, um, which was really, really magical and like such a special night for me. Um, that was such a highlight being on the Call Her Daddy podcast with Alex Cooper, who I've been a fan of for a long time was such a highlight. Um, getting to put out a song with one of my really good friends, Kelsey Ballerini. Um, she was on the deluxe version of a song called Better Version. Um, I think there were just, there were so many magical moments from this past, the past two years that have just like, unlocked so many memories for me and so so much more to look forward to and like bringing this album to Europe for the first time and to New Zealand is going to be and, and Australia is going to be so magical yes we um we gave away some copies of the album on vinyl here um at JD Sports and I was so jealous I was like can I just can I take one can of, I my take one of these <laughs> I was like, can I please please uh -huh. can I uh -huh. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll offline about it, but um, yeah, I mean, I mean, you, again, you've just been out of this world, crazy, exciting and fun to watch. Um, and yeah, pumped that you get to go back um, abroad. I feel like coming out of COVID, um, seeing artists back on tour again is like, for me as a music fan is the best thing. Like I want to go to every festival. I want to go to every show. Um, it, there's just nothing like being in the audience and hearing the crowd singing and everyone sweating. And it's just, yeah, it's, it's, why it's, love music. It. It's, why, it's why we love it. Like there's nothing quite like it. I totally agree with you. Um, okay. So we're going to wrap things up and just chat a little bit about GLAAD. You mentioned um, them earlier when just talking about organizations. And I know that you do a lot of amazing work with GLAAD. You've received a GLAAD award um, and we will be donating to GLAD as an extension of this conversation, donating $20,000 in your honor um, to GLAD. Um, so we just wanted to chat a little bit about the work that GLAD does and how they're inspiring change um, and also how they've inspired you um, with their mission. Um, GLAD is so very incredible and does so much important work for the LGBTQ plus community. And I felt so inspired um, that I started uh, something last year called Meet Her at the Bar um, in awareness to, you know, for the very few lesbian bars that are left open around the country and to save queer spaces and uplift the ones that are still there. And um, we've partnered with GLAAD uh, this for the second year of Meet Her at the Bar. Um, and we raised $50,000 last year and very much hoping to double that this year. Um, and it's just been really, really amazing to, you know, just get to 
uplift spaces around the country that just celebrate love and people meeting each other and meeting community. And um, I think that's something that we all really need. And um, to be able to just support that in a way and launch this for the second year and you know, for build on this for years to come. Um, and I also just think that it's for their, it's their, for their news and response initiative, which is needed now more than ever, um, to make sure that, you know, everything is being reported accurately and, uh, we're always receiving the information that we need regarding, um, queer news and people. Um, so I feel really lucky that I get to do this and to be, honored and nominated and recognized by them. I got my GLAD, a GLAD award this year and that was my first time winning an award for anything. So it feels like wildly fitting for it to be with, with GLAD. So I'm excited about all of the partnership to come. Amazing. I love that. And um, you were just at, um, I think Meet Me at the Bar, did Henrietta Hudson in New York this past weekend maybe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, we, there, there are nights happening all around the country and New York's was just happening and there's all sorts of prizes and photo booths and inspired drink titles. And, uh, we partnered with Tinder actually. Um, and so they've like really joined in with me to help support glad and to raise money, um, which is so cool. And, I'm like, cute. It's the place to go meet friends and maybe meet the girl of your dreams, have a little tequila, um, and most importantly, raise money and awareness. Amazing. I love that. Well, um, Fletcher, I'm not going to take up much more of your afternoon, but thank you for um, chatting with me. Thank you for chatting with us uh, for another episode of Community Voices. Um, good luck with the rest of the month, obviously the rest of the year. Um, I need to make sure I can catch a show soon because I love the album, love the record. I'm sure that a lot of folks do as well. Um, are there any parting words you want to share with the audience that's listening? I'll kick it back to you and then we'll wrap this up. Well, thank you so much for having me. It's always an honor to chat. And I just want to say I love you guys out there. Anybody watching and listening and thank you for tuning in and listening to my words um it means a lot to me and i hope i get to hug you all soon all right well thank you all for tuning in have a good night y'all